Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn. Yeah, the tutorial actually okay, used to be sir, pretty comfy, but it's gone a little hectic now since uh, some new skips have been found. I, I think Salvus mic is muted. Yeah, we can't hear Savu. Yeah, it's mic number one. I gave you a double dose of the wake up skip. Take a quick walk around the cryo bay and So what Savu is doing here is he's setting himself up to block the um, crewman here. And if he blocks him a certain way, he can actually start the first the lights tutorial sensor. early. But we're short of time, Chief. So he's Just not supposed to be standing the there right now. Um, he's actually supposed to be standing like, to the left of the lights, color. but since he blocked okay, his path, he can just start it immediately. And that saves quite a bit of time, actually, because the crewman walked pretty slow. And right here, he's switching his controls uh, to non-inverted, because he doesn't play non-inverted. Okay. Um, we play inverted in the beginning to um, skip some extra dialogue and have some extra lights tutorials. And right there he blocked him again to take him around a shorter path, because normally he goes all the way around to the other side to start this uh, shield tutorial, I guess. Shield read is fully charged. Okay, sir. Bring them down. So a lot happening so far, and this is just the uh, training, and all this stuff actually saves about like 11 to 13 seconds. I mean, all in all, there's probably a good 20 to 30 seconds of time saved in the tutorial alone, so yeah, surprising amount. Including internal, it's like 10 more seconds for that as well. Captain, we'll have to skip the weapons diagnostics. Uh, you'll notice the Easy Speedrun has a lot more um, tutorials, and you'll see pop-ups throughout the run. Um, the Legendary doesn't have this tutorial section. This is Sam. Hi, Sam. Yeah. Oh no. Security! Intruders in the Please don't Nice. Rip Sam. Bye yeah. Sam. <laughs> Bye Sam. That's so, actually really good. Uh, he yeah. can sometimes scream for like four seconds and it's it sounds really painful, but it actually slows us down if it happens so. Yes. Thankfully, it was a short death. So from here he's making his way to the bridge. Um, there are a lot of marines blocking your path. There's actually a, a marine right here that's supposed to uh, lead you to the bridge, but you can just jump over him and uh, speed up the process a bit. Yeah, so we're gonna find Captain Keys here, and there's a nice little skip here. If you enter the bridge and then leave, the game's like, oh no, he's running away. Let's just put him here in the cutscene immediately. Keys is the worst ship captain ever, because he gives you an unloaded gun. What yeah. kind of captain gives you an unloaded gun? But You'll find you bullets, it's fine. But if you run fast enough, you actually skip Those getting the gun, help, so Chief. we didn't Could even get the gun. But let's pretend like we got it. Yeah, it actually skips uh, two grunt spawns and opens the door immediately. And I guess that's because like it checks for the grunts being there, and since they're not there, it just opens the door. And uh, moving on to the next area. Yeah, so Pillar of Autumn. It's kind of a slow start to the run. Uh, it's kind of an introductory level where you're just running through hallways. Trying to not get blocked too much by the enemies, but you don't really have like advanced weapons yet. Just the assault rifle and the enemies or the guns that the enemies have. Yeah, for whatever reason Bungie didn't really trust you with like a lot of the uh, advanced weapons like grenades yeah. pretty early on. So you're just running and uh, gunning down grunts and trying to like optimize your movement. So the assault rifle is really useful for like just mowing down grunts. As well as marines if they get in your way. Yeah. So if you're thinking right now, oh he's just running past everything, this is so boring. Um, actually, while the easy run starts off a bit slower than Legendary, uh, it's way better to like optimize properly, because on Legendary you just get random deaths that cost you minutes. On the landing so above us. we're gonna, gonna be focusing a lot more on tricks in this run, such as this little jump here. Nice. That's actually pretty tough. <laughs> Looks pretty easy, but the, the pillar there is slanted, so it's really easy to just bounce off of it. Yeah, Chief's uh, jumping in this game is really floaty, so it's, it takes a while to control. Especially when you're jumping on rocks later on in the run. So there's some really complicated like, voice line stuff happening in this hallway. Hopefully, I'm gonna get a. Life pods are launching. We should hurry. Oh, oh we got keys. <laughs> I can actually revert to checkpoint there the and the skip one of the voice lines that was happening. That yeah, so Keys was talking there and the next uh, the objective wouldn't have progressed until open. Keys was done talking. So reverting there actually saved some time over just listening to Keys and then listening to Cortana afterwards. 
Because yeah. norm normally Cortana is supposed to uh, speak there to open the door, but Keys has a random trigger dialogue, and if that triggers when Cortana is supposed to speak, for some reason the game thinks Keys random useless dialogue is more important than the game speeding up dialogue, so they put it ahead. So if you get the random dialogue, then you're just screwed. Lose like five Wait. seconds. So coming up here is a pretty cool tutorial skip. If you jump before this tutorial pops up, you can actually preserve your momentum. Uh, normally, if you just move forward and, like, say, press the pause menu, you'll just come to it a dead like stop and have to start you. moving again. But jumping uh, before that tutorial actually keeps your momentum. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end of this level. In the next level already, things pick up quite a bit with you getting access to grenades and such. So, right here at the end of the level, you get a bunch of frag grenades and it's basically just a tutorial to show you how to use them and it's a really convenient way to kill these enemies up here. You need to kill all of them to end the level. So two frags and then gunning down the elite and any uh, leftover grunts. Okay, second level, Chief, Halo. It's a pretty cool level. Right? Can you move? Yeah, so we're going to start off this level with a uh, grenade jump that's going to skip uh, going past the bridge to our left. And uh, this grenade jump not only skips that little bridge, it also skips Morning. a um, I've detected multiple spawn of enemies up on approach. the hill. I recommend moving into those hills. If we're lucky, the Covenant will believe that everyone aboard this rifle died technically bad on easy because if they crash. spawned, we would have one more chance to get plasma grenades. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's actually true. Yeah, so normally there would be a bunch of enemies here, but because well of the grenade banshees jump. banshees and... Yeah. So funny thing, actually, so normally, if you don't skip the enemies, there's a Banshee. I think there's only one on easy, but there's a Banshee flying around. And it's actually possible to, like, kill the elite that's piloting that Banshee and have it fall down here. But sadly, the devs were like, oh no, we can't give them Banshees this early, so you just can't enter them. It's kind of silly. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. So this next area is... Uh a big skip is coming up, it's called drop skip. And this is where and things start getting a bit hard. Yeah, this is where like uh, a lot of the optimization comes into play, because uh, normally there's about like five drop ships, I believe, and um, if you take out four drop ships, three drop ships uh, really quickly, you can actually skip an extra drop ship. So uh, right here he's going to shoot just. two of his uh, teammates to skip dialogue. I've never seen actually. Yeah, yeah. Run down there. I've never <laughs> seen a run down there before. Just kill all of them. We couldn't save them. So no. yeah. I recommend Killing them the actually skips a bunch of voice lines that delay these ships from coming down. And it's really important that we get these ships down really fast. So yeah, there's a skip that I'm going to be attempting here, where if I just kill enemies that come out of these ships really fast then the game will actually skip one of these ships so this one right here this drop ship actually drops off two sets of enemies but if I do this correctly pretty good yeah. if I go fast enough for the next drop ship then that one right there will not have left the map yet before it's supposed to drop off the next enemies, so it just won't do it, and it will automatically skip to the next ship, which will save like over 20 seconds. Not so new to the plasma grenades, because frags and plasma have, the, for some reason, really nice uh, connected duration, because plasma is like 4 and frag is like 2 seconds, so by throwing them they will explode at the same time, which is very convenient. Okay, looks good so far. Yeah, I think you got it. Nice. Beautiful. So normally there's a ship right there, but it's not there. It's here. Yeah, each drop ship spawns when uh, two or uh, less enemies are left, so you gotta take them out pretty quick. Oh, bad nade. The drop skip was actually found uh, accidentally by a runner named Subwhistle, who was just playing really well one day and skipped the ship and he was like, wait, is the game bugged or something? <laughs> I skipped the ship. Yeah, it's 
kind of funny how you can sometimes find stuff by accident, just like that, just by going fast. Anyways, now the fight's done, Fohammer's gonna come down and drop us a uh, warthog, and that's how we'll proceed. Technically don't have to take the warthog here, but it's gonna speed up this level a lot uh, more because it's a pretty expansive map. It's almost open world like. Roger, Cortana. Sorry, Marine. Had to do it. Okay, Charlie T, uh, it's the only map where you have a decision of where to go. All Roger, other maps are linear, while this one gives you sort of gives you options of where to go. Yeah, and the Marines don't have a really great time during this run. We're kind of mean to them. This cave is not a natural formation. Yeah, this Someone level's about saving it, soldiers. We're so gonna it must lead save somewhere. a lot of them. Yeah. I've hacked into the Covenant battle network. You're actually broadcasting tactical data on unencrypted So now we have access to the and Halo car, which is the slipperiest with. car in the entire Master game. Chief, I'm going to use your suit's transcom yeah, driving this car to monitor their chatter. Quite the experience. Yeah. It's often been uh, compared to Crisco oil on ice. But I don't think uh, you Europeans will get that. <laughs> okay. So here's a trick. So can actually use the Warthog's physics to kind of launch yourself forward, or in this case, towards this wall, which will hopefully prop nice. me up. Nice. nice. Saves a few seconds, but one of the more important things is that it actually skips a cutscene here, which takes like 20 seconds of just this light bridge extending, which it's doing even outside the cutscene, so it's kind of a pointless cutscene anyway. This game is really weird because, like, 90% of the cutscenes you can skip, but 10% of them they have decided no, these cutscenes are extra good, so you're not allowed to skip these. And that light bridge cutscene is one of them, so the fact that we can not even trigger it to begin with is really nice. There's new traffic on the Covenant Battle Network. A lot more crew made it off the autumn than I had predicted. The captain really gave them hell. Yeah, so coming up, we can want to explain the, the ending of this level? We have a uh, to sure. An so resistance. the goal of this level is actually to rescue three groups of Marines um, that have crash landed in escape pods while we were evacuating the Pillar of Autumn. And instead of saving the Marines, we're gonna, well, we're gonna accidentally kill them um, because saving the Marines is really slow because we have to wait for a uh, dropship to come pick them up once we've eliminated all the enemies in the area. And there's like waves of spawns as you saw in the first area of enemies. So what we're going to do is we're going to grenade or um, run over the Marines with the hog because it counts as an accident rather than an actual kill. Um, the reason why we want to do this is we don't want to get the Marines angry. If we get the Marines angry, all the Marines on the map will be angry at us if we uh, start shooting at them. Let's um, check it out. But you can shoot a few of the Marines. There's like a little betrayal counter going on in the background. But uh, what Savage is going to do in this first area is just uh, throw a few grenades and get rid of these first group of Marines. And that'll save having to wait for a dropship to come up. Even if they get mad, it actually doesn't matter. It's just inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally possible to still finish the level even if the Marines get mad at you, but it's kind of annoying. So, that's the first Marine group saved. Saved? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they would die anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, real. that's actually true. We should search the interior of those structures before we leave. We should search the interior? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Where could the Marines be hiding? Okay, so coming up in this area, we're gonna find another group of marines, and these ones especially are pretty hard to kill, actually, and you kind of have to do it fast, in a way, because there's some marines voice lines happening in the dropped. final part of this mission that depend on how fast you're going here, and can really ruin your day. How fast you you're going here has nothing to do with how good you play, mainly, yeah. being lucky with the spawn. Yeah. That's pretty okay. Should be able to go for the fast finish here. So now we're coming to the final area and there's a few dialogue skips we can do. Um, I think Sav would do this area pretty fast so he can probably get it. It's pretty complicated in how it works but... Uh, yeah, so go. 
It's because this is such an open level that there's a bunch of like things happening all over when you're driving between the areas, so they happen at kind of weird there's times when you can go fast. Above the structure. What are you doing? You have to stay with the Marines. So these Marines you actually don't have to kill. Um, you, you can save this last group of enemies since you have to, or last group of Marines, since you have to, uh, uh, get in the ship anyway. I'll call in and drop ship to pick them up. So may we swoop in with a couple donations real quick? Yeah, sure. I'm just clearing out the rest yeah, the of the level, level is done, so good donations. Perfect. We've actually had three major donations. One is a $200 anonymous donation. Wow. Oh, nice. Who says, uh, sure. Who says, hi. Hi, and then hi. hi back and off. We have another $200 anonymous donation with no message. That's the last of them. Roger, and we're not Roger. done yet because we got an exact donation of $305 saying Serious Sam deserves serious donations. Which means that donation goal is met. Thank you guys. Nice. So, across the level, there's these nice, like, huge beacon towers. So, it's actually possible to launch yourself on top of those if you're, like, doing crazy grenade launches with the Warthog. And the Halo series has actually historically had a pretty active tricking community. So, there's some pretty crazy stuff you can do in this game. Yeah, even before it was a speedrun, there was a lot of just like out of balance hunting and trying to get to places that you're not supposed to. And then and it was really cool. If you want to see something truly crazy, once you're done watching ESA for the week, go to YouTube and search Tower to Tower. It's the most insane launch you'll ever see. Stick to the higher so, right. level. so this is the Should third level in the game. This is called uh, Truth and Reconciliation. And um, the beginning part actually doesn't really matter. We're just going to bomb rush to the end. Um, but for whatever, whatever reason, uh, for this level, Bungie was really obsessed with uh, wave fights. There's going to be a lot of wave fights uh, coming up. And it's going to really show off like uh, how uh, optimized the combat can be. Because the way we deal with the wave fights is pretty cool. Yeah, this is the first level where, near the end, we're actually gonna start doing some real tricks. So far we've done like a grenade jump and some warthog flings and whatever, but this level is where the real fun starts. Cortana to fire team Charlie. Move up on the left. You should be able to flank the enemy. And just because this is easy, like, it's not like you're gonna die, but get it going fast and not dying is not the same thing, so... Yeah, there's still a pretty high chance to die if you're just like playing risky all the time. So for this area, um, Sav is going to go for an early wave. Um, he's going to try to kill all the enemies in the area before proceeding uh, forward because he doesn't want to hit a trigger on the ground. So once all the enemies are taken care of, it'll start spawning the uh, waves immediately. So let's see how this goes. Ah, oh, missed the first nade, damn. so that's already... Yeah, it's our skip failed, sadly. Yeah, so what he could have done there is thrown grenades and taken out four waves with his uh, frags, but uh, since he didn't kill all the enemies in time, um, you heard the Cortana dialogue go there and the dropship spawned. So now he has to wait to kill um, three grunts here, or all four, for the waves to spawn again. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had to kill the grunts in that dropship because he just had to proceed it with the level. It didn't lose too much time though, so it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. just like 15 seconds, it's not too bad. And the early waves trick is one of the harder things in the run. Definitely. Found relatively recently. So those uh, hunters take one shot in the back and three Once shots up front. Ship. Home in on the captain's so that's the first interface. wave fight of the level done, and near the ship's right as we get into the ship here, search. it's gonna be another wave fight. Yeah, there's gonna be six waves, and they're random, uh, but first we're gonna Sorry. shoot that marine, Sorry, marine. and that's gonna skip some dialogue to spawn the uh, waves immediately. So all these waves are random. You can get like three different groups, I believe. You can get an elite and two grunts. Uh, 
an elite two jackals, four grunts. Uh, we generally want the elite and two grunts because the elite is pretty easy to take care of and the grunts are very easy as well. Jackals are like the worst. If we see jackals, we'll probably be throwing grenades. Also, the elites run out really fast, so it's always good. Yeah. And you'll notice he's uh, shooting the ground a lot. Uh, that's not just for like fun. He's actually trying to alert the enemies to come out of these doors a little faster. Like, for trying to get this fight perfectly, it takes a lot of practice because there's so many variants. Since there are the four different doors, and two of them are fast, two of them are slow. Um, and on the slow doors, you want elites because they run out fast. But on the fast doors, you prefer to have grunts and jackals because you can nade them faster usually. And if you get a fast door and you're far away, the elite will actually run out and it will be slower. So it's a lot of variants, and you're gonna have to be ready for a lot of things. The fight will never really be the same. So you'll notice these red doors all around the ship. Um, this next area, uh, called RNG Room, is actually pretty interesting because the, the only enemy or the only uh, the uh, the people that can open, open these doors are the uh, Covenant. So Savu just overcharged an elite there, and he got really angry at him and chased him down to a red door, and he got this door open. Yeah. And that skips uh, like two waves of enemies. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be another wave fight. This level really loves its wave fights. Yeah. But we don't like them to skip most of them. And speaking of wave fights, there's another one in this next room <laughs> that I'm hopefully going to skip. Yeah, it's just wave fight after Cortana another. So he's going to shoot that elite because the elite can actually kill him while he's performing the skip. And this is called the TNR nade stack. Um, you can guess what it might be. So there's this little overshield on the ground. And actually when you pick it up, you get like two seconds of invincibility while it's charging up. So you can use that to um, survive three whole grenades and then just use the rest of your health to get nice. all the way to the top. And that was well done. That's one of the larger skips in the game. Skips probably a good like three, four minutes of gameplay. Just yeah. running through hallways and actually breaks the level a bit and ends a bit early. Kind of weird how it works. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. We'll, uh... First it saves like two minutes of walking up to this floor and then it saves like one minute in the ending of killing stuff. The level is now confused at where we are. The level thinks we're elsewhere than where we actually are. Can I mention something real quick? Sure. Thank you. We were having some issues with the on-screen donation tracking, which is all going to be solved after the Halo run. Awesome. So be uh, uh, rest assured that all donations are coming in. We're seeing them. We're getting them. The donation total will go up. And actually, we're actually over $36,000 right now. So thank you and keep them coming. Nice. nice. That's sweet. So in case you're confused on what we're doing here, we're actually rescuing Captain Keys because he was uh, abducted while he was uh, going down with the ship. So we're just trying to get to Captain Keys as fast as we can, and this is the room where he's holed up in. So we're going to free Captain Keys, hopefully get some health and some grenades are in this next room. Yeah, and so here starts a we nice escort mission, shuttle, though obviously we're just going to kill, kill the, the guys we're supposed <laughs> to escort. But sadly you can't kill Captain Keys. Because then the level just fails. But the reason I actually killed those marines is it makes Keys mad at me, so now he's trying to kill me. And well, first off, it makes him follow me a bit faster. But second, there's actually like kind of a mini cutscene kind of situation happening at the end of the level that's like just Keys and Cortana talking to each other for ages, and it just skips right past that if Keys is mad at you. Yeah, and since we skipped a bunch of uh, triggers with that little nade stack we did, um, none of the enemies spawned at the end, so after Keys is done talking, you're actually supposed to steal a ship and uh, leave this uh, big uh, ship, I guess. But since none of that spawned, it just ends the level. Yeah, so now it's time for the Silent Cotopifer. Probably the most epic Halo level. The Covenant believe that what they Both call in casual play and in speedruns as well. Somewhere under There's going the to be a lot of tricks in quick succession uh, near the end of this level. And the island has multiple yeah. structures and installations. Even starts out with One this contains the map room. hype pelican ride and leading right into this epic battle. Oh man, look at that! Look at that fight going on over there. Yeah. Just want to join them? Yeah. Let's fight. 
Sabu, do you like that? Long walks at the beach? <laughs> yeah. I love long walks on the beach. Uh, we're not actually going to go fight those enemies. We're actually just going to go this way and uh, go uh, find a warthog that's beached somewhere. So this level is actually really cool and uh, is going to have a lot of tricks just like in quick succession. So um, what he's going to do here on this level is he's going to drop all the way down to the um, silent cartographer and pick up the map and then go all the way back up is pretty much the gist of it, but he's going to do that in a pretty interesting way. Yeah, so you're actually supposed to like first go to the map room and then to Covenant, lock a door in front of you and you're like, oh well, gotta go all the way to the other side of the island to unlock the door. It looks like and then a path you can the go back to the silent the photographer and activate it and then fight your way all the way back up here and then the level ends. But, I mean... It's one single locked door, so it's not going to be a problem, hopefully. Yeah, we have the Halo car. We'll be fine. There, yeah. in the cliff wall. I'll bet the silent car Halo car is quite magical. So he's just going to take this car down this uh, little area that it's not supposed to be fight. in, obviously. The must be here. And then he's going to do like a little hog fling here. And clip right through the door. And then he's going to pick up two plasma nades. And those plasma nades are going to come in handy later. But first, he has to drop down and surround this fall. Nice. Perfect. You can uh, hit the little seam right there and then just avoid all damage entirely. And then it's going to crouch before he lands and you can save a little more damage. And right here is the stick stack. This is a pretty cool trick. We're going to stack six grenades. And, uh, well, first we're waiting for a checkpoint. And hopefully we're going to make it all the way back to the top. I'm not getting a checkpoint. Oh, That's no. Yeah, I think a grunt found you. Failed it there. So oh. this is by far the hardest trick in the game. One of the hardest tricks I've done in any speedrun, actually. So I'm going to give it a couple tries. Ah. He's not getting the checkpoint because uh, normally you could just try it over and over here. But these first two grenades are actually really important because he wants the plasma grenade to actually bounce off shield so it doesn't blow early. And then, oh, so close. So close. Oh, no. I'm just gonna go here though. I mean, I gave it a couple tries, so that's yeah. enough. So you can see where the grenades were supposed to take him. It was going to take him all the way back to the top. But this is just as fast. It actually breaks even with the old route. Subsystems. They've locked so the he won't lose too much time. We don't have enough firepower yeah. to get through them. Cortana, see if I can get this hunter to boost me. Ah. Go ahead, Cortana. Right under me. Have you found the control center? So now that we found the map uh, the to Halo, we're just going to make a quick se exit out of here. I, so I comment in chat and yes, um, the pistol shots he was shooting is for timing the grenades. That's correct. Yeah. So the trick is incredibly hard because you need the grenades to explode at the exact same moment. And the last grenade you actually like stick yourself with, the plasma grenades stick to people that they hit. So it's that's why it's called stick stack and yeah, it's just it's hard man. It's hard. Sabu is actually a person who found that trick. And for whatever reason here, the enemies just die. I guess because we skipped a bunch of triggers. They just, they're not supposed to be there, so they just die. So this is the silent cartographer. Probably one of the shortest levels in the speedrun. Yep. One of the cooler ones, for sure. Coming up next is another level with a big skip. A bunch of dead time, so I hope you have saved up some donations. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have some time for them soon. So, the skip in this level is pretty cool conceptually, but at the same time, it makes the rest of the level kind of boring in a way, but. I yeah, mean, this is actually a pretty cool level. Yeah. Um, we're gonna this be. This was my favorite level as a kid. Yeah, same. Good. Roger that. We'll be able to find our way to the control pretty fun level. This game had a lot of like just replayable levels when yeah. I was a kid. 
so for this trick coming up, uh, the bridge fall, guess what it is. Um, we're going to be falling off a bridge to get all the way to the bottom because we're actually pretty high up in the beginning. And we're going to abuse Master Chief's fall timer. Um, this game has a fall timer, so if you fall long enough, uh, you'll just automatically die. And it won't matter if you can actually cancel the damage or not. But luckily, he can fall pretty far down before that fall timer triggers. Interesting. So we're going to do a series of falls here. Here's the first fall. It's pretty easy. I if the rings the second fall is actually the hardest one because you have to the go around to this little protrusion run. on the wall. And if you hit it, it just bounces you out. So that's actually really good. It's a pretty hard fall. And this is probably, I didn't think there were if any not the biggest skip, one of the biggest skips right. in the game. It just Zulu. skips a lot of walking through hallways. Zulu, and the Our other main way. purpose of this trick is that you will shortly see there's no enemies here. I mean, where are all the enemies? <laughs> They're gone. Wow. They're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some vehicles here, so ah. you can flip this ghost to go like really close to you, but it's fine. That still saved a bit of time. So there are still vehicles in this level for some reason, but they don't have any elites riding them, so you can just take them and drive through. And yeah, because of the bridge fall, this is going to be pretty much a completely empty map. And you can actually do like a sequence break like this in most of the levels in this game, where you just like despawn all the enemies, but it actually will not let you finish the levels. So this is the only level in the game where we can actually do this. Yeah, for whatever reason, the, the end level trigger is just there. It works. Yeah, it's like tied to a button in this level. So you just press the button, doesn't matter what else is going on, and the level will end. There is another level later that we really wish you could do this because we know how to make this happen on the level but for some reason that level is really picky and if you miss a single trick on that level the game will just nope you can't finish yeah. sorry it's incredibly easy to actually do this in a lot of the levels so sometimes we have to like make sure that we actually hit the triggers <laughs> and yeah. don't, don't like accidentally do a sequence break it's easier than you think too <laughs> Yeah, if you have any donations, this is a great time. We, uh, we certainly do have a few, although we could always use more, but we have $5 from Anonymous saying Halo 1 is the best game ever made. Good luck on the run, something with tortillas. Then there's $20 from Call Me Zero. Hey guys, shoutouts to the sick duo hosts, Mergy and Seven Sins, who don't like me. Feels bad, man. Uh, I guess that makes the plant feels bad, man. Thank you for the $20, zero. And there's another $5 from Anonymous saying, hello from That's Linux, Star Butterfly. So here we're actually switching to a Banshee because, well, you're not supposed to fly a Banshee here, but there's no pilot, so we can just kind of take it. And this is the first level where the devs kind of thought, oh, well, we should give them access to a Banshee, but we'll make it hard. So that Banshee, you're not supposed to get, but there's a later one that you can actually get like in casual play. So a nice little grenade jump there, saves a couple seconds. Yeah, it's actually sort of interesting since this is easy. So they have the tutorials pop up when you enter a new vehicle, um, but they don't have it for that one. But the next one is going to grab the tutorial will pop. Yeah. Even though you you have to get a camo to get that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not really sure how they were thinking with, them, with that. And then even if you get the tutorial message here, later on in the game, it's going to give you another Banshee tutorial message. So <laughs> it's kind of, you're not really supposed to get this one, but you're also kind of supposed to get this one. Also, want to see a magic trick? Oh, oh, that grenade disappeared. Oh no. What happened? What so place? yeah, grab this banshee here, and we're on our way to the control room here. So.
so it's actually quite possible to kill yourself here by just exiting the Banshee the wrong way and having it land on top of you. Hopefully that doesn't matter. Or hopefully that doesn't happen, rather. Yeah, I guess we didn't mention it. Since we skipped a lot of triggers, we our last checkpoint is actually when we were driving the Ghost, and that's pretty far back now. So we don't want that to happen. I think you only get like two checkpoints in this entire level. Yeah. So that's assault on the control room. Neat level. And this is 343 Gildas Park. Some people really love this level, some people really hate this level. It's a pretty fun one, but it's also kind of scary. So if you're scared easy or scared the easily, then close your area. eyes. There's Absolute some spooky stuff going to happen. Yeah, this level is actually where they first introduced the uh, the flood. The what? The what? Oh, uh, Tell them. <laughs> sorry. Spoilers. Uh, right here he's actually going to do a pretty risky uh, plasma nade. He has to have at least four yellow or five yellow here. Um, if he has three, he can't continue. Yeah, I guess we didn't mention the grenade damage. So on easy difficulty, while the enemies don't really deal all that much damage to you, your grenades actually deal increased damage to you because they were like, hey, I mean, your grenades need to be powerful. They need to be able to kill enemies. So they just deal a ton of damage. Yeah. And didn't get this jump. In, in the game, actually, you and all enemies on all difficulties have exactly the same health pool, but all weapons are scaled differently, which is why you deal more damage yourself than to enemies. Yeah, so, for example here, since I'm doing two grenade jumps in a row at the beginning without a health pack in between, health management is really important. So, coming up is the other grenade jump, which is... Pretty tight timing as well. Ah. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty easy to die from explosives. Yeah, four yellow is the bare minimum of health you need for this grenade jump. And it can be pretty... Uh, Why is it always rough? It's uh, actually... Go ahead. Like, the health bars that you have don't super accurately show how much health you have so i probably had like a low for yellow there yeah since it's just like a range of health that each bar reset or uh, represents i'm pretty so. sure you can have like two yellow but three red or something like that yeah, as well. it, it, it's, it's pretty it's weird, weird. <laughs> so this is the reveal room this is where the flood appears Oh no, spooky, spooky popcorn guys. Yeah, this is where the first form of flood are introduced, the popcorn flood. It's probably not their real name, but it's what pretty much everyone calls them, just, just popcorn flood. And we know we got all of them because the music started playing. And suddenly zombies. No, it's space zombies. Yeah? They but they're not them. actual zombies, they're the flood. Yeah, clearly not zombies. Yeah. yeah. They, they eat people. When you die by them, you become them. It's to totally different. Yeah. So going through here, we're going to pick up the best weapon in the game, by far. The shotgun. It's a very short range weapon, but deals incredible amounts of damage. Yeah, plasma we'll weapons in this game deal a lot more damage to the, the, the Covenant or enemies with shields, but the shotgun is a, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it, it deals a lot more damage to like uh, enemies with flesh, I guess. Yeah. And whenever we have access to it, we'll be using it. So right here is the hardest uh, jump in the game. The hardest jump in the game. Camo Jumo. Or Camo Jump. Oh, I can't believe I actually missed it. Like I said, very hard. Once again, this is one of those slanted edges where it's really easy for Chief to, instead of land, just bounce off it. And you're not supposed to be up there, so it actually if you stand up, you will sort of hit the ceiling, like an invisible ceiling there too, which is why I have to crouch. 
Yeah, don't feel too bad if you miss Camo Jumo because even our world record holder here, Savu, fails it often. Yeah, it's time time. one of those tricks that we joke about. It's <laughs> it's not all that hard, but no, it's not. the physics of this game make jumping sometimes incredibly hard. So, a nice little grenade jump here as well, using the pillar to boost myself up. And the funny thing with this light bridge here, when you activate it, you can actually walk on air for a moment before it appears. Yeah, for whatever reason, it just like disappears when it reappears. I don't know. Magic. So we're coming to the end of uh, 343. So that last grenade jump he did, that brought him the one red, is actually super important for the end of this level. Um, the end level trigger is actually based on um, Chief's health here, and if he's on one red, the level will end faster. There are a few other triggers that uh, affect it, but this is the fastest one. Yeah, it's kind of silly. There's like four different ways to end this level on easy. On legendary, they restrict it to like two. But yeah, it's kind of silly. It allows you to have like different gaming experience every time. Yeah. I guess. I guess they wanted to make it feel like you were fighting for your life or something. Yeah. And then, finally, 343 Guilty Spark and his Sentinels come to your rescue. So I don't think we explained backpack reloading. Oh yeah. We're like halfway through the game now, <laughs> and we haven't explained the most important thing that we use in this entire game. Yeah. It always gets forgotten. So, so there's this technique called backpack reloading, where if you double tap the reload key and then switch to your other weapon, um, you're weapon that was uh, just switched out is still getting reloaded. So now we're on library, the uh, longest level in the game. The best level in the game. <laughs> I would disagree. No, yeah. This this level is this level is interesting it's, for sure. It's good and it's bad for a few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is it's very random. It used to be a pretty um, chill level where you just run through and do a few grenade jumps through doors, but since this new trick uh, called flood bumping, well, I guess it's not too new anymore, but uh, this trick called flood bumping was discovered, it's added a lot of randomness to the game. So there are two forms of flood in this game. There are the elite flood, which are a little bulkier, and then there are the human flood, which are a little smaller. And some of them can be revivers. Um, they take like one pistol shot to be uh, gunned down, and for whatever reason, they just pretend to die, and then they come back to life after like a few seconds. And when they get like shot down, their collision box actually disappears for a sec, and then reappears once they come back to life. And we can use that to clip through these doors right here, because um, they take quite a while to um, open. This one's not too bad. It takes like maybe like 20 seconds for it to open, but it, it's like 10 seconds. The first one is really yeah. fast, but yeah. So the problem with flood bumping is that it's completely random. Since well, whether a flood is a reviver or not is. It's like a 40% chance to be a reviver, yeah. and you need to get one to do the flood bump trick. So I didn't get one there. I tried the human flood, but he didn't let me go through. Yeah, so we can't really... Uh, th there'll be ways where we can uh, force a flood bump to work for us, but uh, again, it's random, and yeah. sometimes it can fail. So a lot of this level boils down to maximizing the amount of uh, human flood that you can try for the doors. And so, yeah, the reason we use Human Flood instead of Elite Flood for the Flood Bump is that they're just way, way nicer to control. They run towards you, they smack you and end up in like a consistent position. And the Elite Flood just flail around and end up wherever. So this is the first elevator. There'll be three elevators in this entire level. Um, and there'll be like five doors we'll try to flood bump through. We just tried our first one, and so right now we're like 0 for 5. Which is your favorite elevator? I think this is my favorite elevator. Uh, I'm a real fan of the second one, to be honest. My favorite elevator is the one on Mall. I agree, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I changed Speaking my mind. Of elevators, we have a $20 donation from Anonymous saying, This is my favorite elevator. Good luck, Sabu. Oh no. Luckily, you're very lucky. <laughs> So, he wanted to do a grenade jump there, but uh, I think a popcorn flood like yeah, got that, a bit of his health. That's 
incredibly rare, actually. I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't notice that, but it's... Yeah. Yeah, frag grenades are really brutal. Um, they take a lot of damage, like your health away. You need full shields and yeah. full health. If you have taken any damage whatsoever, then you will die. And Yeah, so the frag grenade jump was supposed to skip these sentinels, but it's fine. You can just gun them down anyway. It makes this fight much, much smoother to try and flood them. Yeah, it's super important to take out those oh, sentinels, no. otherwise... Uh, They'll just attack your flood. Oh, that's a shame. Very unlucky. So right here, he's setting up a flood bump. He's just looking on the ground. Okay, I'm actually glad that that guy wasn't the reviver because yeah. I need full health here as well. He has to do another frag jump, and like we said again, um, we need full health. You can kind of get away with doing a frag jump with just one bar taken off, but it's super hard. You can also do a plasma with, I think, two taken away. Yeah. So he's just going to take that health pack and just wait the door out. I think that's a smarter move. Not a great beginning to this library, but oh well. Could be worse. Could be worse, yeah. There's ways to lose a lot of time in this level. Does that mean we have some more time for donations? Yes. Sure. Perfect. We have five dollars from Anonymous saying, Horses are awesome! And Halo 2. I wish Halo had horses. That would be amazing. Yeah, sorry. Only cars and other such vehicles. We have four dollars from FinFan saying, Call out to my friend Seb if you're listening. Keep your chin up and keep trucking on. So here, this door opens up part way and you can kind of just grenade jump through. Normally you're supposed to wait there for another like 20 seconds. This is another one of those levels where the devs really love their, like, defend this position fights. At least this time they're not really wave fights, but... Like, all of those doors that I'm trying to flood bump through, they take forever to open, and... You just kinda wait there and do nothing, so... Even though the flood bumping is random... Well, it skips parts of the game that are really boring, so... It's kind of a blessing in that way. Well, this whole level is just a big middle, middle finger, considering Guilty Spark teleports Chief to the level, and then when you're done, he teleports you to the other side of the planet, but he can't teleport you up three <laughs> floors. <Yeah. laughs> it's kind of silly. So you didn't see any uh, of them shoot, but they're a rocket flood now. Uh, this is the first level where they're introduced. Uh, we'll see more of them uh, later in the run. They can be pretty annoying. Yeah. Rocket launchers in this game deal incredible damage as well, especially on easy, so... Oh yeah. It's... If you get hit by a rocket, you just die straight out, and... The Flood actually have surprisingly good aim with the rocket launcher. Like, most of the other weapons, they just spray around and hope they hit you, but... The rocket launcher just snipes you. It's insane. Launchers are MLG Pro. If you come up behind them, they can do a 180 and uh, flick shot you with a rocket. <laughs> okay, so third floor. This is the floor where we should be getting at least one, hopefully two flood bombs. And I will actually be doing some checkpoint manipulation in order to make sure that that happens. So the checkpoint system in this game is kind of weird and the game doesn't want to save if you're in a dangerous position, so you can sometimes delay checkpoints by, for example, jumping. Or, or throwing grenade. Yeah, throwing grenades, so here I'm gonna throw one. And I want to get a checkpoint right here. Nice. So this is one instance where we can kind of just uh, gamble try. with the checkpoint. No! Not like uh, this. Not like this. <laughs> so... Ooh. Ooh. Again. Nice. This time it worked. So, Elite Flood are really hard to bump with, as you could see. The angle you need to shoot him at is actually really precise. And like, the spot you need to stand on. But... We still saved time over... Like, doing that without the flood bump. Yeah, thankfully we have a, like a really good checkpoint there, so just 
try it about six times before we lose time. Yeah. And so, the way it worked there is I got a check before the flood spawn, so I could just the spawn them over and over again. And yeah, my health is kind of sketchy here. Yeah, I could just spawn them over and over again and eventually get a reviver. And it's actually kind of sketchy. Yeah, shotguns are snipers apparently. I think you're dead. Oh, that's that's rough. Yeah. Oh well. well Halo I gives and Halo takes away. I have some donations to cheer you up if you want to. Yeah, sure. We could use a couple. We have fifty dollars from Anonymous saying "smiley face!" exclamation point. We also have a hundred and seventeen dollars from ten ten two twenty, saying oh. "the flood are spoopy," but I'm glad we have such wonderful people to reveal them with. <laughs> Don't forget us over at haloruns.com. Shout out to Tendan for being a nice person and a cool Halo runner. Did someone say haloruns.com? Did, did someone say haloruns.com? Oh man, did someone say haloruns.com? So here, I'm going to get a checkpoint with some flood already following me. And so those flood have already decided whether they're gonna revive or not, so let's go see what they've decided. They've decided that I'm not gonna have a good time. Oh no. So, yeah. So we have no flood uh, to work with here. Uh, not like Dark Door, the we, we pretty much just get what we have to work with, so we're just gonna have to wait for the door or wait for some flood to come down and we can try a few. This is the only flood that can trick you because sometimes these will die in one shot but still not revive for some reason. So that's not the case. Not even standing in the right spot. Try something. Ah, he wasn't even a reviver. So, revivers, I don't know if we said this, but revivers die in one pistol shots and Normal flood dying too, so that's how we know whether our flood is going to revive or not. This level does not like you right now. This level is a real bully. Yeah, so grinding for PBs uh, can be pretty annoying because library. The run can die here even if you did nothing wrong. Playing frame perfect the whole run, even if that's not really possible, and then get here and your runs rip anyway. Yeah. This level didn't. The game might just not give you the luck, and yeah. All, like, all combined, the flood bumps save around two and a half minutes in this level alone, and then there's another one you can do later that saves like 20 seconds. So it's quite significant actually, but. I mean, if you're not ready for randomness, then Halo is a bad choice anyway. A lot of the, or basically all enemy AI in this game is just random. So they have like set moves that they're gonna do and like objectives of, like they specifically try to block you and stuff like that. But mostly it's just randomly decided what they end up actually doing. And that can have a huge effect on runs as well. So coming up on the final time door here. Hopefully we can get flood bomb. I mean, even the flood type is random. Like here you could get like just humans, but now we're getting just flood. <laughs> yeah, normally you get like at least a shotgun uh, human form here, but we only got one needler. Okay, needler guy, I believe. Oh, needler guy? Why, dude? Could be fake, because the other guy shot him. Yup. <laughs> Can't believe this. Thanks, other guy. Shotgun guy, I believe. Oh! Just gonna do this for swag. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Uh, so what he was trying to set up there was a teleport. If you can get wedged in that door a certain way, you can just teleport outside the door. But uh, he saved uh, probably like a frame doing yeah. that. So 
Yeah, you can get a really fast bump there and it will save a lot of time or you can get a really slow one there, like I did. And I mean, it saves a little, but very little. Remember you got shot. Yeah. So it should be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice thing you got checkpoint. Oh, cool. it's a good thing you got that checkpoint. Yeah, that could have been a minute really. Yeah. This is kind of a brutal spot as well, because you're doing a grenade jump with enemies shooting you from behind, and also enemies jumping through the door that you're trying to grenade jump through, and it's just super easy to die there. And yeah. Yeah, you can't really do much about it. And right here is one of the unskippable cutscenes. It's like 53, 63 minutes, seconds 63 long. seconds, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, that was quite the library. Oh well, glad we're out of the terrible levels. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait, the next level. Next level is also terrible. The next level is pretty bad, yeah. I mean, it's a fun level, but it's, it's rough for speedruns. Yeah, Kirbin brought it up earlier where there uh, the next level we could skip a bunch of enemy spawns, but it's very uh, picky on which triggers you have to hit. Uh, if you have any donations, that would be a good time. Oh yeah, we definitely do have a very certain donation. A hundred dollars from someone called Seven Sins. Uh, here's some money to save them kids. Money goes to Twitch Chat's choice. Unless they can't make up their mind, then it can go to some children's card game. Kappa. <laughs> Look out! You can do it, Twitch chat. You can make a choice. I believe in you, Twitch chat. Okay, so in this level, everyone turns on you. So before you were fighting, fighting the Covenant, and then you were fighting the Flood. Now you're fighting both of them, and also these Sentinels that were your allies before. So that's fun. And this level has a pretty nice chance of just straight up killing you. There's a lot of things in this level just that just straight up insta kill you. No chance of survival. We can't let the monitor so out. Those include not to do we super have to slide. stop him. We have to destroy <laughs> Halo. Should I? No, no, don't do super slide, please. <laughs> the data. I the best so of there's a trick here where you can do a cool slide. It saves like two seconds, three seconds, and, and it's really cool. It's really fun, and it causes something called a checkpoint scale, glitch, however. which, a if you die after getting it, you look like four minutes, and it's right before the most lethal part of the game. So I'm going to search what's left of the yeah, you will just for whatever reason not get checkpoints throughout the entire level, other than like this next one in the generator room. Skipping so. checkpoint triggers, we that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. buy some time in case the monitor or his sentinels yeah. find a way to, to the goal Halo's of this mission is to the blow up three of these. The machinery in these canyons are Halo's what are they called? Pulse mechanisms. generators? Pulse generators, they yeah. Consist of three so, pulse the way you blow them up, up is you just jump into them and then, like, into space. your shields the detonate them. And I can't even begin to basically, it just takes away all your shields and... You can proceed. Objective accomplished. So here, thing just throws a couple sentinels at you. Scanning. Yeah. Nothing too dangerous. Oh, the too bad. Central core is I think well Chad actually came together so and made runner's choice happen because the I always see Chad is just runner's choice. I guess Sabu gets to place the place the donation. I actually can't remember what donation incentives are coming up, but usually a good choice is just putting it to the next one that's coming up, so... Oh, I heard some children's card games need some love. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> We'll need it to reach the pulse generator in time. Okay, my health is a bit sketchy, but screw it. I'm gonna do this anyway. Oh. Survive. I believe. Yeah, so I had to take that grenade jump really safe because, well, I had already taken damage. So, yeah, I didn't want to die there and ended up not getting quite the boost needed to get up there. But, yeah. That would have saved like two seconds or something. It's not too big of a deal. Yeah. So most of these rooms are just like running through uh, casually. Just trying to get out of here as fast as we can. We're not really staying to fight. Yeah, so at this point, one of the more dangerous enemies is Jackals because 
they're the only enemies in the game that can overcharge you. And what an overcharge does is it's this move where you charge up your plasma pistol and then it instantly takes away your enemy's shields. And since I'm so on health, I'm mostly relying on shields at this point. So if I get overcharged by a jackal, it's really bad. But thankfully, I didn't there. Oh, the most dangerous enemy is Banshee, never forget to chase to life. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's coming up soon. So, this is where the game gets kind of silly with the insta-kills. So, up in this next hallway, there's a flood with a rocket launcher. And hopefully I'll be able to kill him before he kills me. Yeah, we're gonna try to bring him out here with a shotgun. And there he is. Nice. Good. Shoot him for good measure. The fun and thing is, you get a rocket launcher for free here. Yeah, that's gonna become... Actually, I don't think it's that useful anymore, but uh, it's uh, it's still pretty useful. Use it in a couple places. Yeah, it's not required by enemies. Chat, so always gonna need your help. Spam bless RNG right now. This bridge is quite something. So, there's a bunch of flood, some carriers. There's three flood with rocket launchers over this... Uh, over in this section. Not to mention and that sick banshee. <laughs> there's the banshee. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing you can do <laughs> to avoid the banshee. It just decides to sometimes ram into you, insta-killing you. And yeah, it's incredibly slow to actually kill it. And it's just, just have to pray. But of course, it's a marathon, so you know, all the RNG is going to go badly. <laughs> Halo, please. <laughs> Holy shit. Take an alternate path here. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, you can clap for that. That was really good. <laughs> and because the game's not nice to us, it's not going to give us a checkpoint, so more fun. Okay, Banshee, please not again. Chat said you couldn't die on easy. Yeah. See how wrong they were. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Banshee's approaching. Okay. He flew away. All right. That's nice. So you can see him approach on the radar sometimes. And well, there's not really anything you can do. But you can anticipate the death sometimes. But yeah, that's the most dangerous parts of the level over. Yeah, from here it's pretty much just smooth sailing. Yeah, and we get to do the cool tricks of this level. So coming up is an elevator ride, so you have time for like a donation. Beautiful, we have $17 from Heroic Rob saying, Hey Sabu, take my energy. Hey Rob. And also so a quick one if we still have time. Sure. Five bucks from Jangoose saying, Halo car, Halo, Halo car, Halo car, Halo, Halo car, Halo car, Halo Jeep, car, Jeep, Jeep, Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, I attempted to do a small trick there. Didn't work. Oh well. Would have saved like half a second, so it's fine. And that grenade jump is really difficult, so glad that that at least went well. Yeah, it's a lot harder than it looks. The timing is super tight. So right here you could shoot the uh, little ghost okay, to flip it towards you. That was really... That was really nice. Okay, so for the next couple sections, it's just driving through, hoping to not get killed by that wraith there. And like, there's some banshees flying around and stuff. Never they can do silly things to you. <laughs> yeah, like drive you up this wall. Yeah, yeah they, can, they can do really <laughs> silly things. The banshee AI in this game is quite magical. Yeah, there's some pretty good highlights of uh, Halo Runners just getting owned by the banshee. Like, the banshee has a rapid fire, it has like a plasma grenade launcher thing, but no, no, it tries to <laughs> run you over. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the banshee. So here, coming up is the second boost generator. This place is also kind of dangerous because it's just packed full of tons of flood and there's one with a rocket launcher and then when you blow up the generator it spawns a ton of flood in this hallway that you're supposed to exit in and there's another rocket flood there so I will try my best to take the rocket guys out. So 
So a little grenade there to take out as many as we can, and then we're going to try to get out here as fast as we can. Because health is a bit scary again. Just melee on one bar and live. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Nothing bad could happen. You must have like the minimal amount of health possible right now. <laughs> yeah. I located the pillar of autumn. She put down 1,200 kilometers. And funny thing here, the banshee the actually falls show, faster than it flies, so I just fall down here. That tunnel leads to the next section of canyon. The final pulse generator we need to destroy. So coming up is a brand there. new skip that was found pretty recently. Uh, we used to just grab that ghost uh, to the left, but instead we're just going to drive the banshee through and do a pretty uh, silly looking clip and hopefully get past this big door. Yeah. So when you activate this door, it just like explodes because I guess they wanted you to walk and not take the ghost throughout the entire level. But instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to nudge your way through this door. Hopefully try to get this banshee onto the other side. And I think we got it. There we nice. go. Nice. Woo! So that saves about like 45 seconds, I believe, to like extra driving on the ghost that we would have to do otherwise. Yeah. So even though you spend a bunch of time actually like ramming the Banshee through the door forcibly. Uh, the Banshee actually flies a bit faster than the Ghost, and in addition, uh, obviously you can fly with it, so you can go places that are high up pretty fast. Here I need to take a quick detour and kill these enemies here, because, again, this level has some weird triggers, and here you just need to kill a certain amount of enemies before you can progress with level. Yeah, I believe it's like five flood yeah, before the next area works. We also have to fly pretty low um, because we have to hit ground triggers. Again, the game wanted you to walk at this point, but instead we're just going to fly with this banshee. Just need to hit this, and now we can fly to the end, which is up here. Yeah, and that's pretty much the end of two betrayals. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Uh, the ending here doesn't... Grab the health pack. Oh. Why would <laughs> yeah. I grab the health pack? Please grab the health pack. There's nothing here. So, the ending of the level isn't fully loaded. There's supposed to be enemies here, but they aren't here. And this pulse generator here doesn't actually exist. But if you jump into it, boom. Find Works. Target neutralized. Let's get out of oh, here. there's nothing here. Okay. Okay. So, this is keys. This is going to be a hard trick, so I'll let you guys explain what Captain? is going to happen. Captain? Yeah, so this is I a pretty him. lengthy level. Um, the ending is actually like in view at the very beginning. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take out these grunts and uh, disable that shield for a bit. It's actually just temporary, temporarily disabled. And then we're going to line ourselves up on this little pixel-perfect trick that's going to bump us out, uh, out of bounds to where we can walk to the end. Uh, similar to flood bumps, the collision box just disappears and then reappears as soon that as... That was really uh, fast. Yeah, that was really good. Um, like, really quickly, and that allows us to just get teleported into a random place and uh, nice. just jump to the end. Yeah, that was really good. Congrats on not garishing it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, this level is shaped kind of weirdly, and the beginning and the ending are really close to each other, so... Doing that skip there, you basically just go past one locked door, but you end up skipping like four or five minutes of content. Yeah, this is like the shortest level, probably. Yeah, it's the shortest level in this game. I think there's some Halo, shorter ones in Halo the other. 2 has a shorter one. Yeah, um, Uprising, right? Uprising, yeah. Yeah, so here's a cutscene. People are kind of attacking me. No human life Hopefully they don't kill me too much, but I mean, it's fine. Yeah, you can actually die in this cutscene. We can't and let it the flood get off this ring. You know what he'd expect. Oh hey, it's Captain Keys again. What he'd want us. He looks a bit do. different this time though. Let's put on a few pounds. Yeah. There we lost a few pounds. <laughs> Rip Keys. It's done. I have the code. We should go. So now we we're just escaping from here and, go back to the bay and find a ride. going to proceed to the last level. 
So we spent this whole level to go get Key's head thing, and in the end it's useless. So this is the second yeah. level in the game that is completely useless. Yeah, it's funny how a lot of the levels in this game are actually quite useless in the end. So right here we're just gonna wait for some Banshees and do some swag here. Gonna get it. Boom. Nice. And these banshees are also magical. They're not they're not actually Try like rubber banshees there, kinda. We'll Let's then go through walls. For whatever reason they're just really fast and can clip through walls. It's because uh, technically you're supposed to walk down a yeah. bunch of stairs. And yeah, then you're not. Then you're then never the, supposed to take yeah. those banshees. And then the level will end as soon as you get in the banshee. But because he jumped down so quickly, there is a few moments before need to get to the they get to the point where the level there, ends. So you therefore, you can the fly the, the clip banshees. An of the ship's so this engines. is the last level. Uh, the, should damage enough uh, below the beginning it is actually pretty cool. We're going to be doing an, another out of bounds glitch to skip uh, going to a bridge. And uh, activating a cutscene. So, what Sev is gonna do here is he's gonna kill all these enemies and hopefully grab a shotgun. Because the shotgun's gonna be pretty useful for this uh, next trick. There goes, got one. <coughs> then he's going to uh, kill all the flood and hopefully get a checkpoint. Nice. nice. And then he's gonna wait on this door right here just a bit, just to delay this door from opening. And then he's gonna crouch, and that's gonna clip him out of bounds. And then he's gonna jump on this little. Uh, uh, cubby, I guess. Uh, you can't really see it. And what he's trying to do here is he's trying to make the next room load because in this game um, the, the room uh, that you were last in is the only one that is loaded. So he's going to use the shotgun to uh, shake. That's, a shame. That's unfortunate. He's going to use the shotgun to just uh, shake the camera and make the game think he's in the next room and that's going to load the next area. And then he's going to do some out-of-bounds walking and so if, uh, going to the bridge. The jumps he's doing doesn't look too hard, but the the things he's trying to land on in the ceiling are actually really tiny. Yeah, none of the ceiling is like solid. Everything he's walking on is either just like a lamp fixture or like just paper thin walls. So these two lamps here and then there's like this little paper thin wall they has to land on and the jumps are a lot harder than they look. Okay, I got and it. And he got a second try. That's pretty good. Nice. So now we're making our way to the uh, engine room, where we have to blow up the ship to destroy Halo. Yeah, so we were actually supposed to go to the bridge and there's like a cutscene that tells you what you need to do, but we never went there so, I mean, we never learned what we need to do so, I mean, obviously we were just gonna go blow up the ship for no reason, so why not? Gonna pick up a little overshield here to do a sick jump. Um, we want to preserve most of the overshield here because there's some enemies in this next area that are going to try to bring it down a bit. So uh, We should still be good. Yep. That's unless I get plenty. shot here. Yeah, unless you get shot by Hunter. Which you didn't, so nice. Okay, so this is going to be a rocket jump. So rockets in this game deal absolutely insane damage, but because of the overshield, you can actually survive this one. Engine room located. We're here. Alert! Nice. The monitor has disabled all command access. We can't restart the countdown. And so these engines the are kind of on cycles. There's like the flaps that reactors. open and close, that and do doing the rocket jump skips the cycle. Halo. Don't worry, I have access to all of the reactors. So those uh, little flaps are open early. I'll walk you through it. First, we need to pull back the exhaust cup. So there's four in total. He's already got two of them. That leads to the primary fusion drive. Get these last two Good. and Step one complete. make our way to we the end. We have a straight shot into the fusion reactor. We need a catalyst explosion to destabilize and the, the engine room. Field that was actually really well done. It can go explosive. like really wrong. There could be some flood that block your way if when you you're jumping across the, the other uh, engine. So this is a buggy elevator. You can just walk on it before it comes down. And then just back smack this elite. Um, the fuel rods aren't actually, you can't pick them up. So they just cause chain reaction. 
It's also really important to jump here before the elevator goes up, or you just Cortana you to fall Echo through. Because Come you go Echo under the elevator, if you don't jump, you actually don't ever get on top of the elevator, so you can just get left down there while the elevator goes up, it's kind of silly. Anyways, approaching the final part of the game, the water run. Probably the coolest uh, end to a video game. So he's gonna grab some health there, just in case bad things happen. We have six oh. minutes before oh. the fusion drive oh. Almost got stuck there. We yeah. Need to evac now. Be a shame if that ever happened. Yeah. When I know, right? Zero, the engines will what are the chances? The explosion will generate a temperature of almost 100 so he's gonna do some pretty uh, cool maneuvering Don't here around the pillars with his driving. Uh, he's gonna try to not lose any speed at all and just like this really smooth driving and it's gonna save a lot of time. It's actually the fastest way to get through this area. Whoa. Nice explosion. <laughs> yeah. Never seen that before. That actually scared me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have time for a couple donations here while we're driving. Well, I wish there were a couple, but we have at least one from 00 Svo for $20 saying, please show extended Bumo, whatever that might mean. Shout out to Svo and Sorry, but we already passed that point. But yeah, that's it for donations, so please yes. donate. You know, we, we need something to read. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But, um, so... So this is a pretty long driving section, and it actually doesn't make sense because the ship is not this long, and why would there just be this long driving highway type thing yeah. in a ship? This trench is like two kilometers long or something, and the entire ship isn't even that long, so... Also remember, when the ship explodes, it goes like 100 million degrees. 100 million yeah. degrees? Yeah, I mean that, that's a lot of degrees. Considering the sun's surface, what, like 10,000 degrees or something? <laughs> 100 million, this ship is... Don't worry about it. ...pretty warm. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty warm. Some more pillar maneuvering. So coming up, should I try it? I'll try it. Yeah, sure, why not? So, there's this thing here. It's, it doesn't really save time, but... I'm it's gonna try it anyway. Yeah, there's a trick you can do. If I get it, it looks Wait, really cool. This is if I don't get it, I just up. look like a fool. But here. It's fine, I already died a billion times, so I'm not worried anymore. Cortana to Echo it's a shame it doesn't save time. There's an audio cue here. Echo 419! No! Oh, oh, dang it. So oh, well. What were you trying to do there? So, it's possible, it's an incredibly precise timing, but if, we move, if you throw yeah, the plasma grenade it. perfectly, it clips through the nose of that banshee and sticks the elite inside. And what that does is it causes the elite to jump out and you can get the Banshee, and you can actually fly, to, fly through the end of this mission with the Banshee instead of driving with the Wardog, but sadly, it was not to be. Feels bad now. should note that that does not save time, it was mainly <laughs> yeah. for uh, yeah. Yeah. bonus points. So I, while everything is blowing up, we have one dollar again from 1010220 -10 saying, don't. Stop me okay. now! I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. I'm gonna need some uh, Kevin Turtle spam in a chat for this trick. 360 swag. Yeah, perfect. Nice, dude. Ooh. That one actually isn't just for swag this time. So, actually, if you just drive off, then there's a good chance that you'll just flip and die because the driving physics of this game are very good but the 360 levels your hog and makes it easier to not die. That's the ship. Move. Oh, at least I got this. Oh, that was really Beautiful good. Beautiful barrels. Yeah, that was really Final good. boss of the game. And... Time. <laughs> nice. We're cutting it close. So, that was Halo C on the easy. Hope you enjoyed. 
If you like this run, if you want to see more, if you 